Hi there, welcome back to the channel. In today's video, we're gonna be talking about how to be a writer and how to write a book by stealing like an artist. While my intro and title may be a little bit controversial, I literally don't mean going out to the store, getting a book and plagiarizing the hell out of it. No, what I mean is the more creative sense of stealing like an artist. I've recently read this fantastic book by Austin Kleon uh, called Steal Like an Artist. And this is kind of where this idea came from on like how to become a writer, how to get started in writing a book. And also if you're worried that this video doesn't apply to you because you're a digital artist, you're a musician, a content writer for websites, stop right there because you're wrong. This advice can literally apply to any industry, hobby or pastime, potentially a career as well. Now we've got that out of the way, Let's get started. Two of the most common questions that I get as a writer is how to become a writer, how to be a writer daily, how to write a book, how to start writing my book. I know exactly where you're coming from because if I rewind time to before I had written my first book, Old Eyes, I wouldn't have been able to answer that question. I wouldn't have been able to know where to start to become a writer. I just did writing. And I think it's because we all feel like we should be taught it from someone else or we feel like we haven't picked the right subjects at school or we haven't read the right books yet or we feel like there's another step in the process before you can actually start to become a writer or start to write that book. But that's the wrong way of thinking. Even though I do have an MA in creative writing, that didn't really teach me on how to be a writer or how to become a writer or even how to write a book really. It was more about understanding your process as a writer and understanding how your influences can really affect the kind of writer that you are, the kind of stories that you would like to tell and just basically understanding yourself in the grand scheme of things. And that's what I wanna share with you a bit today. Hopefully give you some sort of framework that you can kind of follow just to get started writing or to start writing that book. And also talking about how your influences really affect who you are as a creative artist. And it's important to think this way because your influences are very relevant to the work that you'll do. You aren't just in this sphere of self-loathing with imposter syndrome. For me, it was H.P. Lovecraft. For you, it might be Coldplay if you're a musician. It might be George Lucas if you're a budding filmmaker. Understanding those influences in terms of yourself will help you build up your own confidence in your own art. You know, if you wanna start writing that book, start by stealing different ideas and concepts from your favorite things and don't be restricted by media format here either. If you want to write a dark fantasy Western like Stephen King, go for it. Want to include the political backstabbing of Game of Thrones? write the hell out of it. It's okay for you to kind of steal these general ideas from these kinds of fictions, because again, it's been done before, but along the process of copying and stealing in this creative way, you'll have that light bulb moment. You'll find your unique story or your unique voice along the way. And there's no need to think that you have to be 100% original to be 100% original to yourself. That's kind of deep, I need to write that down. So I'm just gonna present like a basic workshopping method that you could potentially use just to kind of generate some ideas and just start writing that book that you've always wanted to write and get you on the path of becoming a writer. Just grab a pen, stylus, tablet, piece of paper, whatever works for you. Write down a list of three to five of your favorite stories, short stories, novels, it doesn't matter. Try to think about those stories and three favorite moments or concepts or ideas that are present in those stories um, and just write those down as well. Now, just randomly connect a few of those different ones from the different ideas. Now, just connect them randomly up in a set of three to create a premise for a story. For example, I might get something like this for the first premise. The story began with a mistaken phone call. It takes place in a decaying beachside town and it ends with the protagonist losing everything. I'd like to see if you could guess what stories these concepts came from in the comments below. If you think about it as part of their own stories, they're very unique and important to that narrative, but separately, they're just basic ideas, universal ideas that any writer could do. These are stolen elements that are used in an original way. And this is, in essence, stealing like an artist. I'd be interested to see what kind of story premises that you came up with. Let me know in the comments below and I'd, and I'd definitely be happy to talk about them and maybe give you some more ideas as well. Now let's talk about some practical steps just very basic so that you can put yourself on the path of becoming a writer and writing that first book. 
it's the hardest, trust me. Step number one, read often, read widely. Seriously, you need to consume if you want to create. Don't just read what you like, read other things. They'll open your mind to different ideas and different ways of thinking and different theories, which might spark other story ideas or concepts. For example, me, I've been reading a lot lately about art fundamentals and digital painting to try and improve my own skills as an artist. And it gave me some horror ideas that I really want to try out in one of my short stories set in the same world as my books. And again, you're not just limited to books here either. Like consume games if you enjoy games. Try to analyze them or try to pick apart your favorite moments and try to think about why they're your favorite moments. Because again, games, other media formats can be a very powerful vehicle for storytelling and they often are. So we shouldn't limit ourselves to the food that we feed our creative beasts. Number two, know your grammar. This might get a groan from a lot of you and don't worry, I totally understand where you're coming from, but being dramatically correct will definitely set you apart from other writers in the industry. Your work will be more ready to send out to agents. It'll be at a publishable level faster than other writers and you'll need less editing work and trust me, the editing phase is going to be the longest phase. Trust me, writing that first draft is a lot easier than the constant editing and tweaking and time lost on just trying to make it perfect. And speaking of the first draft, step number three, just get the first draft done. I've spoken about this before, but just get it done. It's statistically frightening how many people every year whether that's a New Year's resolution or it's just something somebody decides to do, they buy something, they pick up a new hobby. But a lot of people just give up because of a lack of willpower or determination or not really seeing the end in sight. But that's gonna happen to you throughout your whole career, regardless of what industry you're in. You'll never see that end goal. You'll kind of know where you wanna go. Again, most people probably wanna be millionaires doing whatever it is that they're doing. They wanna be happy, they wanna be fulfilled. But if you, if you don't focus on the small steps that you need to take to get there and you're not willing to put in the work to do the reading, try and find resources to figure out how to do freelance work, how to how to find all of those publishers and agents, etc. You're not going to be successful in that way. So just remember, if you're going to start becoming a writer, try to make it just a small part of your routine. It doesn't matter if it's five minutes of writing, 20 minutes of writing, two hours of writing or 16 hours of writing because you're stuck indoors because of coronavirus. And just remember, just as you don't need to be 100% original, the first draft doesn't need to be 100% perfect and will not be 100% perfect unless you're a golden child of writing. Step number four, create a basic outline. Now, this differs from person to person. Some people are pantsers and literally just wanna keep writing and just be in that creative flow and just write down ideas. Some people need to make sure they have every single detail, every single plot point written down so they know what to do. But trust me, even when I've been in that mood where I'm a bit more of a pantser than a planner, because I'm probably on that side of things, creating a basic outline of your book will help you a lot. You know, they just have to be the basic points, the essential parts of your stories, the ABC of where the story begins and where it will roughly end. This isn't set in stone and it will change, but having some sort of framework or structure to follow will definitely enable you to be more productive daily. Step number five, get excited by what you're doing. You know, if you're simply taking the step to watch this video or research online how to become a writer or how to write a first book, you're already far ahead of the competition who are simply not doing anything, who are not doing that research, who aren't even putting those first few words on paper or even ruminating, thinking about the book, thinking about the story, thinking about the characters. They're like the idea of becoming a creative person or an artist, but they just don't do it. So just get excited by what you're doing, seriously. In fact, that's one of the reasons why I've persisted with this channel. It was so slow in the beginning and I saw no results in terms of people engaging with my content and thanking me for such and so advice or asking questions about X. Because I'm genuinely excited and passionate about sharing these advice and tips with you. So being positive with yourself is one of the most powerful vehicles of self-motivation that you can have. So relish in it. Step number six, seek advice. Seriously, don't be afraid to ask questions. Whether it's on Reddit or the comment section of YouTube videos or other forums or areas, because most people, most writers, most creative people people, actually just most people in general are willing to help if you ask for help, you know? And most people are encouraging with the sharing of ideas and getting excited by certain things. And that might be a good way to test to see if your story ideas 
are any good or not. You know, and bouncing these different ideas around will help you kind of structure and find your own flow. So for example, if you steal those kind of ideas, you kind of incorporate them into your own story, and then you tell somebody, they might they might see the reference. If they do, you might need to change it. Or they might say, oh, that's really cool. It's like such and such, but because they're kind of connecting it with that, that makes them a bit more excited. So it helps you kind of figure out your own stuff. Step number seven, share your work. You know, before even sending it out to agents and publishers, be prepared to share it with people, whether it's people in this community on YouTube or Reddit or subreddits that you find for writing, or it's a Facebook group, it doesn't matter. Wherever it is that you share, you just need to be able to get that feedback for someone actually physically reading your story or listening to your song or looking at your artwork. And you need to find people who are willing to tell you the absolute truth. That means if they think something is crap, they will tell you it is total crap. And I know that might want you to curl up in a ball of writerly ignorance, trust me, but taking criticism in your stride and actually acting upon that criticism will make you a far competent and professional writer. You'll also be taken more seriously by agents and publishers too. If you don't want to share it with many people, do what I did for my first book. Find a single person who is also a writer and have a critique partner. So you read each other's books, you give each other feedback in each chapter, and that will help you structure and give feedback to each other. Simple as that. Right, that's kind of like a few steps that you can kind of take to become a writer, to start writing that first book. So I'll kind of just kind of break those down into mini subsections and just briefly summarize them. So one, do my exercise to generate a few writing ideas. You know, think of these as your own writing prompts. Two, create a basic or complex outline for whatever your needs are. Just make sure that you know the rough idea the rough structure of your story. Three, start writing the first draft. Don't care about the word count. Don't care about the quality of the writing. It will be crap. And do not be afraid to steal ideas from games, TV shows, anything that you think of, anything that you like, anything that you're passionate about. Remember, steal like an artist. Get it done and be excited and share your accomplishment with friends and family, with people on social media. Just remember, you've achieved more than the average person has in a lifetime. Now get to the editing, ask questions, search for feedback. You'll get ideas which will help improve your work. Then rewrite and edit and edit and edit again until you're happy with it. You'll never achieve perfection, but you can get as close to possible as perfection as you can, or at least you'll be happy with. I really hope these ideas and questions and my rambling has kind of answered the question on how to become a writer and how to write a first book. Again, the process will be different from anyone. I've, people come from different backgrounds. People have different levels of language or literacy or they've read different things, or they've played different games than other people. That doesn't matter, that makes you unique. And just to give you a final idea, my first book actually came from a short story that I wrote in my bachelor's degree, which I kind of just abandoned and it sat on my hard drive for a long time. But the character that I wanted to follow in a book, the general premise of an idea of a story, general premise of a story, sorry, um, was there, I just didn't develop it, it just left it there until Many years later, I grabbed it and I was like, right, I'm gonna write this into a book. Again, just taking that step, just getting started is the hardest part. And you know what? Even though these are basic steps, I will be creating a few more videos which go more in depth into like chapter structure or writing characters. For example, I've done a few of those on my channel already. So just think of this one as kind of a primer to get started. So get started now and don't regret it either. If you like this video today, please hit that like button as it will help me out an absolute metric ton. Seriously, you don't know how much it helps. And you might also like my writing and storytelling playlists where I share tips and advice on how to write and um, how to create characters, role-playing advice if you like to write for role-playing games as well, which is something that I love to do as well. You know, I share ideas about literary concepts in film, games and TV and other content which hopefully I think will help you to gain ideas or just at least think things in a different way to give you new ideas for your writing. Oh, and please subscribe to my channel if you don't want to miss out on any future content. I have one in the works on why I chose Scrivener uh, on my iPad to write my first drafts of my books and stories. So that's coming soon. I'm just editing it because I wasn't happy with the edit. So I've kind of gone back to the drawing board a little bit with it. And please, 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 please. I know this sounds like I'm just pandering and begging. Basically, that's what every YouTuber does. Share this video on social media and don't just randomly share it. Please try and share it in groups or with friends or family members who want to become writing or they want to try writing during this craziness in the world right now. Basically, if you think it will help someone, you know. Otherwise, I hope I've helped in one way or another. Um, and yeah, I'll see you in the next video. Ciao.